you have to keep it simple, stupid. You cannot get a standard hose barb and expect to fit it on an AN hose. It's just not going to work. So you can use uh, a hacksaw. But what I like to use is my portable bandsaw. Check this out. Ta-da! Oh yeah, check that out. I love AN fittings. Ah! Hey, welcome back. Part 17 of our engine rebuild process. What a long haul. In part 16, if you missed it, we put the water pump on. And in today's episode, I wanted to continue the thought process of keeping your engine cool because it's pretty critical, especially if you own a Pontiac motor, and I'll get into why. The second thing we're going to do today is use AN fittings. I'm going to put together an AN system for the back of the heads. That is my trick to keep the, the heads cool, and maybe you can implement it as well. But the way you install AN fittings is universal to any engine in any project in any size. So, if you haven't done so already, subscribe. And if you're new here, check it out. That's how we got here. Broke a lifter, had to take the engine out of the car, and uh, you know, and now we're here. So with that being said, let me start with explaining the water flow in a Pontiac motor. Okay, so front of the motor, we did the water pump last week. The way water comes into the engine is actually through the inlet on this side, and the water pump actually pushes the water underneath each head. So it goes in through the into the bottom of the head, goes down the bottom of the head, comes back through the top of the head, and when you put your intake manifold on, there's a bridge. And the water comes up to that bridge, and when the thermostat gets to the right temperature, it allows the water to go back into the radiator. Pretty efficient. But as you all know, it doesn't matter what car you have, when it starts to overheat, the trick is to turn on your heater, right? So on a Pontiac engine, the heater line is back here on the back of the passenger head. Now, some of you may not know this, but my dad bought this car brand new. I learned to drive on it. I've also experienced overheat many times, so I... Did not want that to happen again, which is why I upgraded the cooling system so much. And I also upgraded to a serpentine belt system, which will be the next video. I'll show you how to put a March system on because I don't like throwing belts. Now, the, the latest trick that most people are doing is they're just bypassing their heater core, which is underneath their dash, and running a hose from this bib back into the water pump. So you have constant flow of water, unfortunately, through this head. The driver's side head gets neglected. Even back in the day when you would turn the heater on and let water flow, the passenger side of your engine's fine now, but the driver's side head is, is still heating up. And so when a head gasket typically blows on a Pontiac motor, it's on the driver's side. Duh, not enough water. So the trick we're gonna to do today is we are going to bridge the two and run that through the heater core. Again, this is optional. You don't have to do this. This is just what I chose to do. It worked really well. My, car, my engine does not exceed 165 degrees, which is awesome. So we're gonna go back to the back of the engine and we're gonna start doing some plumbing. All right guys, so we're at the back of the motor, obviously. Uh, I added a nipple to the driver's side head and I basically teed off the passenger side. So I have coolant running from both heads into the heater core. Now I happen to have run my heater core tube through the firewall and it looks super clean. Clearly not everyone is in that part of their stage of their um, build so you can still run all the way back to the front of the engine if you want to bypass your heater or, or get creative but I have a three-way valve underneath the dashboard so there's constantly fluid running if I need to run the heater that valve opens up and triggers and goes through the heater core pretty cool now 
the other thing here, if you have a stock head, you're going to have uh, a freeze plug in this location. You can actually buy the same round adapter to go, you knock that freeze plug out, put that adapter in, you now have a 5 8 nipple, and you can go from there. I like it. It works really well. Uh, the thing that I don't like is using 5 8 tubing because of these hose clamps. And I remember when I first put this in the first time, I could not get these to stop leaking. I kept tightening them. I had to get buy news, new hose clamps, and it was really irritating me. And along the process, I started using AN fittings on just about everything. So today, I'm going to convert this little system to an AN style. So if you don't know, AN fittings look like this. You've probably seen them before. They come in different colors, you know, blue, silver, chrome, black, whatever. Um, AN stands for Army Navy. So back in the war, they wanted to centralize on um, common sizes. And, and actually, it was back then, it was just two colors, I believe. It was blue and red. And... Red meant that's the part that you would turn off, and blue meant it's fixed, so you don't wrench on the wrong thing. You have to keep it simple, stupid. Duh. So what we're going to do today is I have uh, several adapters. As you guys probably saw when I painted the heads, I used the nipples as to mask these, these threaded holes, and now we're going to replace it with the AN version. So along with the AN version, you can get different different fittings. Uh, I bought a Y adapter for the, the back end of our hose and several other, other different sizes. So I have like an elbow, so 90 degree elbow. And I'm gonna play with different sizes to figure out what works best and then start putting together. The beauty of the AN fittings as well is if you go to Summit Racing, you can actually buy a whole bunch of them, different sizes, different shapes, which I did. I did different angles, um, different connectors, and you can return the ones you don't use. Well, you know, keep them in the bag, you know, but you have like a 90-day return policy with them. It, it, it's awesome. I really like it. Um, the other thing to note is AN sizes are not the same as the empirical sizes. So a size 10 AN fitting, which is what this is, stands for five eighths so every increment like uh number eight there are sixteenths of an inch so eight is a half inch ten is five eighths of an inch that's how all the sizes work four is quarter inch i think you get my drift so the other thing to note when you buy a hose for this style is it's braided which is also really sexy looking you can get stainless steel or nylon nylon you can bend at a better radius the ID of a nylon braided hose is going to be different than the ID of a standard hose. So you have to be careful. You cannot get a standard, excuse me, you cannot get a standard hose barb and expect to fit it on an AN hose. It's just not going to work. <laughs> so the 5 8 inch hose that's coming out of my firewall this is normal and so i was able to source one of these i think it was on amazon this is a normal 5 8 barb but it converts it to a size 10 an awesome the other thing i forgot to mention about an fittings they don't leak so another great quality you can remove them and in in install them remove them and install them they still don't leak awesome so that being said, I'm going to start modeling it up and I'll meet you back on the workbench to show you how to cut the hose and install, install the fittings. See you in a minute. Hey guys, I was just about to mock this whole thing up on the workbench to mimic the existing rubber hose. And I thought to myself, you know, I should probably check to make sure the distributor fits. <laughs> check this out. Distributors in, if I need to rotate past this this point it ain't gonna happen so thank god I tested this first because it just so happens I bought plan B so it's a three-quarter 
NPT thread on this side, which is the same thread as the Edelbrock blocks, or heads. And so I'm going to go ahead and screw this in, and that will give us plenty of room to change angles. So thank God I decided to put the distributor in before I did the whole oh, tubing setup. I would have been really disappointed. I'm going to go ahead and take these guys out, put these guys back in, and I'm going to use a, a thread sealer. This is actually from Russell. Russell also is one of the manufacturers of AN fittings, and I'm going to use it on this thread, and it's really easy to use. If your part is small enough, you can actually just dip it in here. But since this is bigger, I just you just take a take your finger and then rub it across the threads, and you go all the way around so it's in the thread, and it works really well. So I'm gonna do that whole process on both sides, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. Check this out. So I put the the elbows in, and I have all these parts laying around. I told you guys I bought a whole bunch of different um, angles and different ways to experiment. And this actually works out perfectly. This is at a slight angle and it matches our hose length. So this is the hose length coming from the firewall. Matches perfectly. This is the same elevation. As coming out of here as, as before because it dips down a bit and then this side works perfectly and man I couldn't have asked for a better way to do this so we have clearance to get to our bolt when we have to change uh, our timing either from this direction of the wrench or the socket either way we do it and now we get to go to the next step and figure out our hose length. All right, we need to talk about hoses real quick. Obviously, we're using nylon braid here. Uh, you get some good flex out of it. Um, what you need to do is you need to tape it before you cut it. So I have like, I don't know, four or five layers of green tape here. I, I tried to tape it as tight as I could because this is what happens. I obviously, I obviously taped this and cut it for a previous job on the car. And... It leaves a nice tight end because there is stainless steel in the hose and the braid will actually start to fray on you like it's doing on this end and if it frays it makes it really difficult to put your connector on so when we get to it I'll show you how I put the connectors on but right now we can measure the length and it's really easy to do because we know the hose is going to go up pretty close to the end to this end I'm gonna assume it's not gonna go all the way but when we mock it up we'll put our put our bend in it so it looks like right here so I guesstimated with my tape a little too high so that'll work right there. So I'll add more tape to make sure we have some good uh, hold on our fray, so to speak. And I'll meet you at the workbench to show you how we cut it and how we put the hose ends on. All right, guys. So back at the workbench, we're ready to cut our hose. And there are several ways you can actually cut it. Um, they, I know they sell shears specifically for braided hose i don't have those so you can use uh, a hacksaw but what i like to use is my portable bandsaw check this out ta-da isn't that awesome it's actually a dewalt pipe cutter uh it's got like a four inch stroke or throat and a mounting plate that you can put in your vise and it makes it a table saw portable awesome I don't have room in my shop for a legit bandsaw which I wish 
I had room because I would own one. Uh, so this is cool. I can hang it up on the wall when I'm done. Uh, the limitation is obviously the, the four inch throat. But for cutting pipe and doing exhaust work, it's awesome. So I attached it to a foot pedal. I'm going to cut right through the tape. <laughs> Just like that, got our hose. Now that we're at this point, where we have our hose cut, we still have our tape on the ends, this becomes the most frustrating part of braided hose and AN hose fittings. It's getting the end, the hose coupling, on the hose. So it's a lot of trial and error, um, and I can only tell you what I like to do. I like to take my finger and try and push down the edges because there is some steel in there. I don't know if you can see the steel, stainless steel wire shining through there. And then when I take the tape off, it's going to be a little frayed. And I just made it worse. And if you have some tape, a little bit of tape there, it's not a big deal. Now this is the challenging part, is you have, you have to get this inside the hose. So you take the most frayed end and start with that end and work your way around. And it helps to twist it a bit. And there we go. So if you look on the business end, you notice that there is a shoulder, there's threading, and then there's a shoulder. You want to make sure that hose gets as close to that shoulder as possible. So don't be shy, keep pushing. Now what will help in this matter, and this will also help with when we have to thread it on, is to use a vise. Now the issue with the vise, don't just stick this in there because the steel jaws will scratch the aluminum and it will look horrible. So you're going to have to get creative. Either use a shop rag and wrap it or you can go to the next level and buy inserts for your vise. So check this out. This is by Earl's. Earl's uh, is a popular brand name for making AN fittings. It has magnets on it. So we'll stick right in there. You can put it in different orientations. We want it this way for now. And we have the mating side. And we can... Look at that. So now we can just push this in all the way until it stops. And I can feel on the other end. Done. Just like that. So we'll do the same to the other end. The beautiful thing about AN Fendix is they're reusable. At least most of them are. They'll say that right in the package. And now that I'm talking about packaging and name brands, the system that I bought here is by Fragola. And I like to make sure all my fittings and hoses are from the same company. Fragola makes a few different series of hoses. The braided is 2000 series. The stainless steel braid is 3000 series. You can rest assured they're going to work together. But most of them are universal. So it's not the end all be all. Now that we're here, we now need to screw these together. While we do this, we want to put it in our vise. So make sure you leave enough room. And we need to add thread lubricant. This is very similar to uh, lubing our studs for putting our heads on. We need to make sure we lubricate this because it is not going to be easy. And you want lubrication on this end too because that has to go into the rubber. And we can just start threading it on. And you have to get it started in the hose. This is where the vise comes in so handy because you have to push it on to get it started. 
Now, once you're started, you still need an AN wrench because you want aluminum on aluminum. I'm going to pivot my vise a little bit. And this is going to it's going to give you a good workout towards the end here. We're going to try and get as close as we can to that shoulder to make sure we have an adequate seal. So you can imagine if you're trying to do this with two wrenches and not without a vise. I did that the first several hoses and one of them leaked because I didn't have the right fit. Learned my lesson the hard way. So it's pretty tight right now. See how far I can go. Oh, yeah. Woo. You can actually feel the heat from that thread. That's why you need that oil. See the end still the end still turns. That's why it's called a swivel end. Pretty awesome. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing the other side. Alright guys, another great example of how uh, versatile these jaws are. I put the nut this time in the vise because I couldn't fit this angle. This nut got in the way in the vise. So I'll do the same thing. I'm going to lubricate this whole threaded area. Make sure you get the end. It creates a lot of friction. The last one, it actually you can feel the heat through the connection after you're done from the friction buildup. So we'll go ahead and get this started. Oh yeah, check that out. Woo, that's awesome. Let's go ahead and put it on the motor, see how it looks. Oh yeah, I love AN fittings. As you can see why, it looks killer. Um, it gives you some awesome flexibility here. So, for example, I mentioned earlier that these are called reusable fittings. That means if we don't like our hose length here, we can actually take this apart, take this, end, this hose end off, cut the hose, reinstall it, and you can use the same components. It's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get the distributor, drop it in, make sure we have clearance to get in and out of our distributor area, and we'll go from there. Look at that. Plenty of clearance. I can get two fingers in here. So no worries about clearance issues. It looks awesome. Oh, this is sweet. The only worry I might have is that when we install this into the engine bay, we don't have a lot, I don't have a lot of compliance here. So when we put this on the, the rubber hose that's coming out of the firewall, that's my only worry is that we don't have enough room to pivot this around. But hey, I don't care, it looks awesome. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'd have to replumb this whole area, which I'm okay with, but I think we're gonna be pretty close and we'll find out when we get the engine in. Now do you see why I love AN fitting so much? Look at these things, man. They look awesome. You can use them over and over again. They don't leak. Oh, man. Love it. So that concludes this episode. I uh, hope you subscribe so you can see the future of this build, driving the GTO, etc. Uh, next episode, we'll be going back to the front of the motor and we'll be putting our March system back on. So if you've ever wanted a serpentine belt system or have wanted to see how it looks to put it on, stay tuned for that one. So again, thanks for being here. And you know the drill. Build them fast. Drive them faster. See ya.